How's it going everybody? In this video, we're gonna take a look at our next topic, which is going to be VTP or VLAN trunking protocol. So the concept is actually really, really straightforward. So in the event that you want to create a VLAN on one switch and then be able to propagate it to all the other switches in your environment can be enticing to, a, to some. So is that hard to do? Actually, it's pretty easy. So the concept is actually pretty straightforward. You've got two different, uh, technically there's three different modes that a VTP enabled device can run in. Server, client, and transparent. Out of the gate, all switches are VTP servers, which means that they can create a VLAN, they can modify it some way, they can change its name, things like that, and then they can delete it. Where the client mode is more of just, just that, it accepts VTP information. So for example, the VTP server will create a VLAN, VLAN 21, for example, and then it'll push that VLAN information down to the other switches. So the client will accept any information that the VTP server sends it. So in the event that a new, VT a new VLAN is created, the VTP client will receive it. Now a VTP client cannot create, delete, or modify a VLAN. It can only accept information, so it's read only. VTP servers are writable so it can again add delete or modify a vlan at any point in time there's a third option which is actually the most commonly deployed that i've seen is vtb mode transparent transparent is has the ability of doing vtp server operations so create delete modify but it does not listen to any of the updates that a vtb server will send it in other words a VTP transparent mode switch basically turns its listening and learning capabilities off. It will take a, an update in from a VTP server in the event that a VTP client sits south of it. So think of it in a, in a hierarchical order of a high, medium, and low. The VTP server sits at the high, VTP transparent sits in the middle, and then the VTP client sits at the bottom. What will end up happening is a VLAN is created, modified, or deleted on the server. That information is pushed down to the VTP transparent mode switch, which basically just says, you know what, I really don't care, and just tra just pretends like it doesn't see the update and passes it transparently down to the VTP client. That will then either add, modify, or delete the existing information that's there. Now, you can do authentication between the switches in the event that you need to, we're not going to, we'll enable authentication just to show you what that looks like. There are some advancements to VTP. So for example, with VTP version two, it added support for FIDI and for, I forget the other variation of the VLAN that's on the switch that uh, will allow propagation of that information. Uh, there's also another one where you can use VTP version three to do enhanced authentication. And then you can also turn the VTP off on the switch or at the port level. We're not really gonna go into any of those to that level of depth. We're gonna do some basic VTP labs just to show you guys what that looks like and dive into those details. But for right now, that's pretty much it. So what I'm gonna do in this lab, I'm actually going to configure, again, remember this interface is currently off, right? So this guy is shut down at the moment. So we are sending traffic this way. So if communication between 17 and 16, it must pass through switch 36 in order for it to work. Now, what I'm gonna go do is I'm gonna configure switch 34 as the server, and I'm gonna create a VLAN, and I'll create, say, VLAN 21, for example, and then I'm going to configure this guy here as the transparent mode, so he won't pay attention to the VLAN information, and this guy will be the client so we can demonstrate that the communication is going to work the way we said it would. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that party started. So let's go ahead and pull up the Wireshark output. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually minimize that real quick. I'm gonna move this guy up here and move, move this guy into play, which I believe this is the outer interface of switch 16. Yes, this would be it. So I'm actually looking, I wanna use this one because this is where the VTP updates will come in. So if you put in VTP or ICMP, um, that should be enough for what we're looking for. So um, we're gonna see a bunch of details coming through back and forth, but as you can see, not a whole lot's going on. 
what I am going to go do now is I'm going to go to here, pull up the command line, and then on switch 34, I am going to, um, I'm not going, it's already in VTP mode of service. So show VTP status. It's already in the server mode, right? What I'm going to go do is I'm going to go to switch 35, so I'm sorry, switch 36, and I'm going to type in VTP mode of transparent, hit the enter key. So it moves it to transparent mode, right? And then on switch 35, go to global config here and VTP mode of client, okay? Now, in order for this to work out the way that we need it to, I'm gonna to go to here and I'm gonna to go to global config and type in VTP password is gonna be Cisco. Something very simple. Switch 36, VTP password of Cisco. And then on 35, a VTP password of Cisco. Okay, now that that's been set, any updates that do come through, I should be able to see them. So on switch 34, I'm gonna create VLAN 21. I'm gonna name it VLAN 21, okay? Now we see that go go uh, down the road, and well, actually I, I have to exit out first in order for it to apply. And now that we've seen it, uh, it's been created. If we do show VLAN brief, we can see VLAN twenty one is created. But if we close this out, let me bring this down a little bit. So we see. Traffic is moving. Let me see if I can't catch the, the information getting pushed. Let's see. So this is CDP going out. So right now, I would need to see a push go, let's do CDP, let's see if we can't find, going out gig one, that's CDP, these are all CDP for whatever reason, none of them are actually kicking in for VTP. So I'm gonna come down here to switch 36, and we'll do show VTP status, and we'll do show VLAN brief. We don't see VLAN 21 showing up at all, but if we go down to switch 35 and do show VTP status and do show VLAN brief, it did not actually pass the information, which is a little unusual. Do show VTP status. We can see that we are in client mode and we should, oh, the domain, sorry. The domain name never got set. That's my fault. I forgot about that. So the, the domain name needs to be set as well. So I'm actually gonna come in here and type in no VLAN 21, get rid of it. I'll type in VTP domain is gonna be, we'll say uh, Cisco for some simplicity. We're gonna look at switch 35, or sorry, switch 36, show VTP status. We don't get an update for the domain name. And if we go to switch 35, we do see Cisco come through. So we know the information is being passed. We go back to switch 34 and we type in uh, VLAN 21, name VLAN 21, and maybe that's why I didn't see an update go out. I'm going to go ahead and exit out and we should see, let me go ahead and close, cancel this real quick. We should see some information going out now and I don't see it showing up. That's still, it's still CDP. Anyway, so we see the information here, right? If we do show VLAN brief, VLAN 21 is created. We go to switch 36 and we hit the up arrow. No, no update, right? But if we look at switch 35 and we hit the up arrow, we can see the additional VLAN coming through. I just saw an update go through. That's still CDP. For whatever reason, Unless I'm missing something, I don't see the, I don't see VTP coming through. That's okay though, not that big of a deal. We do show VLAN brief, we can see that switch VLAN 21 was pushed 
down to switch 35. But on switch 36, we can see that no VLAN information was pushed. So do show VLAN brief. The only one we have on here is VLAN 100. That's and that's fine. There's no big deal with that. And that's basically yeah. VTP is just that simple. There's not not a whole lot more to it than than that. But currently, again, just so everybody's on the same page, we have the server sitting at switch 34. We have the transparent mode switch on switch 36. So traffic has got to pass through that one. And then on switch 35, we can see that it's um, in the mode of client. Now there are, are some additional capabilities where you could turn things off like uh, enable VTP pruning, which will send, not send VTP updates and v, VTP hello messages down when there are, uh, when it's enabled, which will cut down on the amount of information, which basically means, for example, if a switch is not configured with a, with a VTP or with a particular VLAN, there's no reason for it to signal that, hey, I need this particular VLAN or anything like that. So what will end up happening is you won't send un unnecessary information down to that particular switch. It'll basically cut off any broadcast options. So that's another capability you could turn on. I really can't demo that because I don't have the lab set up to support that particular capable feature, but that's just some of the advanced options that are available to us. So if you wanted to change the mode from version one to version three, for example, you could type in VTP version and say VTP version three. Now when you do this, we can see advertisement requests going out. We can see VLAN trunking is kicking in and all that good stuff. The version is now three, everybody's happy. It said that the VLAN old config file, old version two VLAN configuration detected and read okay, version three files will be written in the future. Cool. So if we look at the do show VTP status, now we are in version three now, right? And then the way that this enhances the configuration is there's a dedicated device that is actually used now to create the VLANs. So for example, if I'm here on switch 34 and I want to be the switch that creates the VLANs, I need to come in here and type in VTP primary. And what I want to, what this means for VLANs is I want to make switch 34, the only switch in the environment that can create a VLAN. So when I do that, this system is becoming primary server for feature VLAN, meaning that I will only create VLANs on this particular switch. So, and it's, it's, it's sitting there, right? I'm, I'm there, if I finally did, you want to continue? Yes. In other words, it's saying this particular switch is the only device that will be able to create a VTP or a VLAN in the future. So if I try to go to any other device in the network, that won't be allowed to happen. So what I should be able to do now is come in here and create VLAN, let's say 22, name VLAN 22, exit out, and we should see a VTP propagation come into play, which we do right there. And we can see VLAN, the domain go out, and we can see the MD5 digest go into play the switch's name that was that sent it. It doesn't give us a whole lot of information as to what got sent because we are authenticating it, right? So, but if I go down to switch 30, uh, switch 35 and I hit the up arrow and I do a show VLAN brief, guess what? Uh, I might have to exit out. No, um, show VLAN brief. It's been created now. It should, oh, you know why? Because this guy's still on VLAN uh, VTP version one. So let me go up here, type in uh, VTP version three. And same thing on, this guy really doesn't make much of a difference. So do show VTP status. He's still on version one though. So VTP version three. It said uh, cannot set the version to three because domain is not configured. Okay, BTP domain is Cisco. BTP version three, do show BTP status. 
this guy is still in transparent mode. So at least he's in the same version now. Now if I go down to switch 35 and I do show VLAN brief, now 22 is there. So you need to have all of your switches in the same version of VTP in order for this to work. So now if I go down to switch 34 and I say go to global config and type in no VLAN 22 and it's uh, going to push that update. So we have a summary. It goes out, it pushes it, removes it. Go down to switch 35, hit the up arrow. Switch 22, uh, VLAN 22 is no longer there. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is really what VTP is all about. Now, there are times where it's not a good idea to use VTP. Um, VTP has, been bro has broken networks that I've worked with in the past through uh, no fault of the engineer itself. It just made, made a mistake. Other times it's catastrophic where it brings the network to its knees. So regardless of how you want to look at VTP, if it's used in the correct manner, no harm, no foul. But if it's not well thought out when you're deploying it, I recommend not doing it at all. If you can avoid using VTP, that's my recommendation. That's just my two cents on it. I, if, wherever I work, I always, um, if VTP is being used, I advocate to turn it off. Unless you have a, a very dynamic network, I honestly don't see any value in VTP, but that's just my opinion. So, because I've seen it break networks. So, at the end of the day, it's I'd rather just let you know how things work and how to get them up and running, and then let you make the decision on your own. They might not make the decision for you. So, with that being said, I want to thank you guys for stopping by and hanging out with me in this video. And until next time, guys, take it easy.